Asuna Yuki's character arc might be the most misunderstood in anime. So in this video, I'm not only going to tell you what makes her great, but why most people have her arc backwards. When Sword Art Online begins, and I mean the anime, not the movies, Asuna is a timid loner, hiding herself with a cloak. She eats alone and doesn't really interact with others. She teams up with Kirito because he asks. At the boss fight with Ilfang, Kirito and Asuna save the day, but then Kirito gets outed as a beater, and for the greater good, he plays into the villain persona. Asuna does nothing about it. She does approach to ask how he knew her name, and clearly holds no ill will towards him, but she lets him go, and then benefits the most of anyone from that boss battle. Shortly after, we see her rise through the ranks of the Knights of the Blood Oath. She's fierce, she's physically powerful, and she's independent. Most people would say this is when she's at her strongest as a character. And I disagree. Why is she stuck in this game in the first place? Because she wanted to escape reality. Why did she want to escape reality? Because she wanted to gain control over her life in the virtual world that she lacked in the real world. In the real world, she's been raised and bred to be the perfect companion. She has excellent manners. She's skilled in all areas that a wife in Japan would be expected to be. She's soft-spoken and gentle, almost to a fault. It's not that these traits are bad to have. In fact, they're good. But she didn't choose to be any of these things. Her mother chose them for her, and this makes her feel powerless. When she's in SAO, she gains all the control she never had. She uses this to become the exact opposite of who she is in real life. And to an extent, it works. She's a warrior who flies through the ranks. She's hardworking and strong-willed. She adopts a more abrasive personality and independent lifestyle. But her perceived strength in the virtual world is all a facade. She's putting on an act of what she thinks a strong person should be, not what they actually are. It isn't until her relationship with Kirito that she truly becomes a strong person. Because once she's with him, you see her caring and compassionate side. You see her become comfortable in her own skin. She goes from valuing the mission to valuing herself. Before, she was trying everything in her power to escape SAO. When she's with Kirito, that becomes far less important to her. If she's with him, she's content, no matter where it is. Detractors might say that makes her weak, that she's dependent on Kirito, but he's equally dependent on her and equally content to place their relationship with each other above escaping SAO. Codependence that leads to mutual growth and happiness Starting a happy family with Yui? That's not weakness, it's strength. A perfect example of this is when Asuna sacrifices herself for Kirito in Sword Art Online. She sacrifices herself for him out of love and has no regrets about doing so. She's happy that they can disappear together because she's truly strong, inside and out. But character growth is rarely linear. As she begins to truly take control of her life, something she felt she had no power to do before, Outside forces intervene on multiple occasions and take it right back. Starting in Elfheim Online. This is typically the part of the story people criticize most about Asuna's character. Before, she was a badass fighter, and now she's nothing more than a damsel. How dare they? But is that accurate? Not really. How was Asuna captured? Was it because she lost a fight? Was it because she was mentally weak? No. She was in a coma for two years, and someone used advanced technology to take advantage of her frail body. Well, is she completely helpless once captured? No, she's not. She's defiant towards Nobuyuki the entire time. She figures out how to escape her cage on her own. Her actions directly lead to not only Kirito helping rescue her, but literally hundreds of other people's lives being saved. Not only that, but she has the courage to return to VR games again after everything she's gone through. She went face to face with her trauma, and she won. Does that sound like someone who's weak to you? And then when she's free of that burden, she has to deal with another. Her mother. Her gaining strength in the virtual world doesn't mean a damn thing to her mom, who has taken control from Asuna her entire life. So Asuna reverts back to her initial weak self, where she cedes control of her life to her mother. Because in the real world, that's all she's ever known. But her growth mattered too. The strength she gained in SAO was real. So while she initially reverts back with her mom, it's not to the extent it used to be. Then she meets Yuki, a girl who gives everything in life her all and is constantly moving forward. 
Asuna and Yuki grow close, and this relationship gives Asuna the strength to confront her mother. When Asuna can show her mother what virtual life was for her, and her mother accepts it, it's the ultimate validation for her both in terms of her growth and that what she experienced in SAO and with Kirito was all real. Unfortunately, she learns Yuki is terminal. She lives life to the fullest because every day could be her last. She wears nerve gear because it numbs her pain in the real world. It's literally used medically. And when she dies in Asuna's arms, Asuna promises to let her spirit keep her moving forward. And guess what? Now she becomes a badass for real. Kirito is nearly killed right in front of her. She's told he may have a physical or mental illness as a result, or may never wake up at all. Which, key detail, she only reacts negatively to the waking up part, which shows how devoted she is to him. Kikuoka talks with Kirito's parents and he's moved, but something's off. He's not where he should be. Asuna is distraught by this but he saved her in ALO. Now it's her turn to return the favor. So what does she do? She uses Yui to track his coordinates through his heart monitor. When they find out he was airlifted out of the country, she reaches out to someone who has ties to the project and then literally infiltrates a government research facility by disguising herself as an intern. Think of how insane that is. She's a high schooler. There is no way the old Asuna would have done this. The perseverance and conviction she has now, that strength. When she enters Alicization, her avatar is a goddess, and I like to think that's intentional, because that's what she personifies, an ideal of feminine strength. When she's needed, she steps in, and it really is a touching moment when she reunites with Kirito. She has to go through all these other protective women in his life to do so, and then she sees him. He's catatonic, but she doesn't care. She's simply happy to see him again after so long. And for the first time all season, he reacts. He tears up and reaches out for her. Even in this state, his love for her shines through. And so does hers. She's never given up on bringing him back. And remember how I said she's a badass? She shows it here. She essentially becomes a general of this army waging war in the underworld and fights for people she doesn't even know because they protected Kirito going to great lengths to do so. I mean, there's a fight where she gets her arm chopped off, and while she needs help, she keeps fighting. Then Prince of Hell shows up, and the fight changes. They can't stop him. Their backs are against the wall, with tens of thousands of other users actively working against them now. Asuna doesn't know what to do, but when Asuna feels lost, here comes Yuki to push her forward again. Yuki's spirit reminds her, you have to keep going, and Asuna remembers the promise that she made. She steps up and uses Yuki's 11 hit special move, and it's beautiful. Yuki giving Asuna the courage to push forward one last time is so well done and so fitting for the character. In most circumstances, that move wins the fight. Emotionally and visually, it's one of the coolest scenes in the series. But this time, it wasn't enough. And that's not a knock on her, she was simply dealing with the wrong guy at the wrong time. Thankfully, this gives enough time for Kirito to return, and he's able to eliminate Prince of Hell. Which takes us to the end of Alicization, where we know that if they don't escape in time, they'll be stuck there for hundreds of years. In typical Kirito fashion, he sets everything up so that he can sacrifice himself so everyone else can escape. But Asuna knows him. He's the man she loves, and she knows he has a hero complex, but she refuses to leave him alone again. So she makes it seem like she left so that he can do what he has to with a clear mind, only to reveal that she stayed too. Her arc, despite some setbacks along the way, really does personify a woman continuously pushing forward and growing stronger as a person and as a woman. In my opinion, it's one of the best handled arcs to show mental and emotional strength in anime. What do you think?